Although at the start of this project I had intended to only use FDM printing, it became pretty clear along the way that SLA printing would be far better suited to such an intricate and precise project. So after doing some research, and thanks to some help from the guys on my Discord server, I went with an Anycubic Photon SLA resin printer. In this video I'm going to talk briefly about my setup for the new printer, the implications it has on my Bionic Hand design, and a new set of tweaked component designs that I've been working on which expand on some of my original designs by taking advantage of what SLA printing has to offer. I tend to be really cautious these days about chemicals and fumes and whatnot, so I wanted to get my setup absolutely perfect before I started printing anything. The main concern was the fumes that SLA printing produces, so I wanted to start out by making sure I had really good ventilation. The room I have my printer in doesn't have great airflow even with the windows open, so I decided to make an air purifier based on a few other examples I'd seen around the internet and on my Discord server. Firstly, there's an adapter component that screws onto the back of the photon in place of its original panel, which allows a 4 inch dryer hose to connect to the back of the printer. Inside the machine there's already an extractor fan and a tiny piece of charcoal foam which does help to neutralise some of the odour and fumes, but in order to move more air I also attached an inline fan to the dryer hose which attaches directly onto this carbon filter. All of the extracted air gets forced through a thick layer of charcoal and this removes the chemicals from the air. Now I don't want to be responsible for any accidents so I should say that this isn't a perfect solution and you should always use resin printers in a very well ventilated room. Having said that, while my little fan is running there is zero odour that I can detect. I don't actually notice any smell at all until I turn everything off and then some of the fumes from the resin in the vat can escape through gaps in the enclosure but provided everything is turned on and the windows are open the workspace that I have my printer in is actually very comfortable. Some other features of my little setup include a tray for all the post processing to keep any uncured resin contained and some parts from Thingiverse for draining the uncured resin from the vat back into the bottle. I also invested in Anycubic's washing and curing station. Uh, it's a pretty convenient way to keep everything contained, although I am finding that it's not great at removing uncured resin from deep holes. I've heard of some people using an ultrasonic cleaner, so I'm wondering if that might be a better option to really blast some of that resin out of my deep holes. As soon as I started experimenting with the printer, it became clear that I'd need to rethink just about everything I'd designed so far. The quality is just so far ahead of FDM printing at this scale, and all the stuff I'd thought so hard about, like not having overhangs, being able to print parts flat face down, and having all the holes being in the strongest plane, just aren't a concern with SLA printing. The first thing that I started to redesign was the rearranged MG90S servo I've been using to power the lateral motion of the MCP joints. I decided that, although it was very space efficient, the idea of cramming two servos into the one enclosure in order to use the rear one as a cable pulley actuator really wasn't working out because of the awkward angle the cables would need to exit the component. By reducing the metacarpal motor component to only house the MCP joint motor, I should have more space to design a robust CMC joint mechanism for both the 4th and 5th metacarpals as well as the thumb. I also decided to try using a better quality servo than the MG90S. I don't want to say the brand name in case I get demonetized, but the model is DS939MG and its gearing is, as far as I can tell, identical to the MG90S pretty much followed the same general structure in the redesigned motor housing and I found that SLA printing was extremely accurate and everything went together super smoothly. I had to make some minor adjustments as I tweaked the design and at the same time I was trying to figure out the best way to set up prints since I'm still new to SLA printing. I also found that it was very possible to add big cutaways with very thin sections which would allow me to see inside the motor while it's still running and all this without having to make any changes to the printing setup. While I'm still making adjustments, I feel that the new MCP joint design is orders of magnitude more robust and reliable than the FDM prototype I've been working with. Another modification I was planning on making later on was to orient the motor on a slight downwards angle, tilting the lateral axis forward slightly. This should make very little difference to the actual function of the hand, but will allow for an even more compact and streamlined design with this protruding motor. 
If you remember a few videos ago, I talked about the specialised hinge joint I had made for the MCP's flexion slash extension movement. It was a pulley with an enclosed potentiometer. So I redesigned the component following on from my findings, the most important modification being to make the pulley surface continuous rather than two halves which join together, because obviously that was a major design flaw, that the fact that the cable could slip between the joint of the two halves of the component. But another thing that I thought to try with the SLA printer was having a snap fit, which was very successful. I'm still considering what other components could be snap fit, but clearly there's scope to reduce a lot of weight and make assembly easier with snap fits or just press fits. If nothing else, using SLA printing I should be able to add lots of registration features to help everything go together easily. So in summary, right now my mind has pretty much been blown by SLA printing. It's a lot better than I thought, and for the scale and intricacies of pretty much all the projects that I do, it's almost always going to be a better option for me than FDM printing. Pretty much all my design work on the hand so far is going to be made redundant now that I have this awesome tool, but guys, it's going to turn out so much better. I'm imagining when I get to designing the aesthetic shell components, I'm going to have so much freedom. And since SLA prints come out almost perfectly smooth anyway, it's going to be dead easy to polish them up. So guys, thanks very much for watching this video. A huge thanks to all of the people who support me on Patreon. Thanks very much for all of your support. And thanks to everyone else who watches the videos too. I will see you all in the next video.